This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by Squarespace.com, GoDaddy.com, and Netflix.com. Hey, welcome to another episode of iFanboy. I'm Ron Richards, and I'm here with... Sonia. And Sonia Harris, in fact, is your Sonya name, right? Sonia Harris, sorry. Yeah, so Sonia is uh, one of the writers at iFanboy.com, and she's here at, we're here at Neon Monster in San Francisco in the Castro District, um, because you're a big fan of Mike Allred, right? I am. And he's inside doing a signing right now. Um, so right now we, uh, we're celebrating the release of Red Rocket 7, uh, which is uh, his, uh, uh, ten, it's the 10th anniversary of his music kind of adventure comic, um, which we're big fans of, as well as Mad Men, which is currently produced by Image Comics. So uh, we're going to steal him away from the signing and see if we can talk to him for a little bit. All right, so we're here with Mike Allred at uh, Neon Monster in San Francisco. How you doing, Mike? I'm really great. Excellent. How are you? Ah, hanging in, hanging in. So we're here for the uh, big release, kind of release party for the re-release of Red Rocket 7. Um, for those who didn't pick it up when it originally came out, what, what is Red Rocket Rocket 7. It's it's my love letter to the history of rock and roll. I'm a big music fan. Um, and also, I'm a big movie fan and I love comics. As, as far as pop culture goes, comics, movies, music. It, yeah. And uh, it was my chance to tie those all together. Okay. And so I did a, a, an independent film called Astro West, um, which ties in with the story of the comic book. And then there's a, an album my band, The Gear, did, which... Um, stands alone as an album or it works as a soundtrack because a lot of the music's uh, referenced in the comic book. The comic book itself is a story about um, these, uh, this man from outer space, uh, this robot in, is programmed to clone him several times to uh, kind of a, you know, safe... Preservation type thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But each of the clones um, is, enhanced, uh, is an enhanced version of him with a specific quality he had. And the uh, Red Rocket Seven has his musical talents enhanced. Yep. So uh, it's how this alien clone, or a clone of an alien, um, interacts throughout the history of rock and roll, or at least the first fifty years or so. It's kind of like a Forrest Gump through rock and roll yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a that, that, I should have said that. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> the beginning is kind of, to my mind, had sort of a day the Earth stood still with a robot going off on its own and accidentally cloning all these guys? Was that something that influenced you, those kind of old sci-fi movies? It must have been subconscious. I love that film, and Gort is the robot you're referring to, and yeah, I love I love how Gort, it, it, you know, is kind of this bodyguard, mm -hmm. and he works in the same way. So yeah, I, I hadn't, hadn't, I honestly hadn't thought of that uh, connection, but it's, I'm sure it was there, because I'm a huge fan of that film. So the, the re-release looks beautiful. I mean, it's all together. And, and when the book originally came out, it was, a, it was a larger size. And now it's almost like a seven-inch size. What was the... Right. I, uh, I wanted... Uh, the idea of the, of the original series was to have it look like a record album. And so it came out in the square format. And, yeah. and over the years, I, I thought I wanted it to look tighter. Yeah. And since we'd already kind of done the LP version, I wanted to do the 45 size, and right. so that's what we did here. And I prefer this format. It's really tight and compact. Yeah. You can put it in your bag and it, easily grab it and reference it. And, right. and it's also the quality of it. We've managed to increase it with sewn binding, and yeah. I'm really thrilled with it. I, I prefer the paper stock. The, 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 there's the two different uh, covers. Actually, the, the hardcover, the dust jacket ha has a different cover but bound underneath or printed underneath is the same art. Right. So if you get the deluxe version, you get both versions of the cover, right. essentially. How much does that smaller size owe its existence and popularity to the, the insurgents of manga, do you think? The smaller did digest size? Did that influence you at all? Not at all. No. <laughs> Never thought of well, that. It's funny, when I, saw it, I, when, I saw, when I saw it and I heard it was smaller, I looked at it, I'm like, oh, it's a seven inch. And so like, oh. it totally kind of clicked for me in that regard. Oh. So, so, when you, so when you were doing Red Rocket 7 and you're, you're kind of going through the history of music, obviously like Elvis and the Beatles were big roles, but as music got more and more developed through the 80s and stuff like that, was it hard to get everybody in or how did you pick and choose what, you know? It, you know? it was. Uh, there were certain moments in, in history that couldn't be ignored and ha had to be referenced but th though, fortunately for me a lot of those significant moments at least from my perspective were what I loved the most uh, like uh, glam rock for instance yeah. not really 
recognizable as as uh, as being significant today, oh, yeah. but if you trace it back, you can't deny it, right? So that was my way because it's one of my favorite eras with yeah. you know Bowie and Ziggy Stardust. I love that yeah. and. Uh, um, T Rex, you know, Roxy Music, all that, uh, and Mick Ronson, Bowie Ziggy, uh, uh, the Smiters from Mars, favorite guitarist of all time. And so I was able to, to really spend some time with those characters interacting. So that was premium for me. Um, before that, the British invasion and, and what it influenced is huge for me. So, you know, Beatles, Stones, Kinks, um, uh, The Who. I just love all that, and and so I, it was just really fantasy fulfillment to just tie this character in with all of these these characters. As it progressed, music naturally branched off into different genres based on the multiple influences, and that's when it became more difficult. And so what I decided to do was then boil it down um, as we got into present day to the the indie movement, which I think it was and is the future. Um, as we've seen, sure, one artist may sell millions of more albums than an indie band, but the, the real passion and, and special uniqueness of what I love about rock and roll comes from those indie bands. And, and when I say indie, I'm not talking about a specific kind of music because you know any you, you can be an indie country artist, right. but uh, for me, um, what represented the indie music that I love the most w- uh, tapped back into th- that British invasion, right. and that's bands like um, the Dandy Warhols and the Brian Jonestown Massacre, and and then you can see how those two bands have influenced a lot of other bands in music. I always make the connection between indie comics and indie music, and in that they're both kind of you know like try all genres, not really specific to one thing. I mean, not that you know um, packaged and, and put out like by a corporation, rather just for the art form itself. Exactly, so, yeah. and I, I having ten years to, to kind of be able to distance myself and then revisit it, I can see how circular it is and how it yeah. it just it, it all comes together, and and also not just the story and the music. But also um, other uh, the the film elements yeah. as well, comic book, indie comics, yeah. and it, it all it all ties together with film. What in, inspired me the most was what Robert Rodriguez did with El Mariachi, where he made a feature film for seven thousand dollars, and that's what told me, hey, I can do that too. Yeah. Are you gonna work with? I heard you're gonna work with him on the. The movie have, from have been for ten years. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, uh, he's a stalwart. We um, keep plugging away, and it, it keeps slowly progressing forward. And that's for Red Rocket, right? No, or for Mad Men. Mad Men. Oh, okay, yeah, excellent. Well, that that's actually an interesting segue because I wanted to talk to you about Mad Men as well, which is now you know you're doing Mad Men monthly at Image Comics for the past well, year. Been trying, trying to do. You've it been monthly. doing. It's been really. I mean, it's been really close to, to on, on, on the you. ball. So, <laughs> um, and what I, I've been I've been a huge Mad Men fan for the year for years, and I was glad to see the issues come out. But I've noticed each issue, I never know what to expect now. Each Good. issue seems like an experiment <laughs> or a different kind of thing. You just made my point. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's uh, there is with every single issue I've done with Mad Men Atomic Comics, the, the new series, there is a specific element, either an artistic technique or a storytelling technique that I've tried to implement right. for my own selfish self-indulgence, <laughs> just to, for me to stretch as an artist. And it's been really satisfying to see people uh, recognize it and, and, and most times appreciate it. I've had some complaints. <laughs> some, some people want the same thing. They want, they, 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 they're comfortable in knowing that I'm going to get this and it's going to be exactly what I want. I'm, I don't like that kind of, I want to see something progress. I want to see something change and move and grow. And so fortunately, most of the people that, that tend to support my work seem to want that too. Right. And um, so I appreciate that. I, I, if I knew what that secret special thing was, that that maybe I would keep it that. Right. But I don't know what it is. For me, that special secret something is that desire to grow and progress. And so I can't do anything else. That, that ev- evolution of the character is what makes it interesting to me. I, I think with Red Rocket 7, what was fun was that you watched him grow over time. Because it was finite, people weren't freaked out by that. With Mad Men, they don't know when that's going to stop. So it's a little frightening because you just don't know what's going to happen. But the evolution is what makes it exciting. I agree. I I did some things with some of my more popular characters that, in retrospect, maybe I wouldn't have because I got beaten up quite a bit. But 
but again, I, I knew where I was going with it, and um, the bruises are worth it because now I'm I'm just two issues away from this conclusion that I was going for yeah. and this what I think is the ultimate happy ending of anything I've ever done yeah. and so you don't really appreciate those happy endings unless you have to go through the, that, that dark stuff yeah. and it, with our lives you, you, you can't appreciate being happy and content if you hadn't had some sadness and sorrow it's that contrast that, that I think is what makes life beautiful if we were all happy and giddy all the time it'd be worthless right. it wouldn't mean anything right. and so that's what i wanted to bring into this this you know the first 13 issues of this new series yeah. and then my next challenge is to do uh single issue stories that's my new discipline oh, cool um and Come that and done stuff like that. yeah yeah that's yeah. a challenge yeah. Be, um but i'm inspired by what i think are the best stories written in any medium of uh, the uh the easy stories the yeah. crime suspense stories you know weird fantasies um weird signs much does your, how much does the coloring in your art lend itself to things like the 70s coloring of independent magazines, self-published things like um, Oz and, and Peter Max prints, that kind of thing? Like it's, it adds such a retro feel to your work. That's where you need to talk to Laura. <laughs> because uh, I, I, I see and appreciate colors and I, I love all, all those references that you, you made. I love that, that pop powerful it's simple right. color because that's how you describe the most i mean your art style is kind of like a pop art kind of thing and that's that's laura i love what she does she's yeah. she has this wonderful color sense so you don't that isn't you telling her to do that rarely rarely it's oh, well. it's her i yeah. it, she'll she'll put, do the colors and then i i come in and you know i'll manipulate textures and stuff based on what's on in the original art but rarely will i change her her colors and um, sometimes I'll, you know, I want it a little darker, I want it a little lighter, but, but her combinations are right on all the time. And uh, I'm just blessed that way that, you know, when we had the opportunity to do coloring but couldn't get somebody to color, she took some time off of her job as a jeweler. <laughs> and it was like, wow, look what you can do. So, you know, she took art in college, and, but she does, but there, there, besides that, there's a natural instinct and she has it that's why I'm, I think she's one of the best women have more color cones oh, so that's a gender thing it actually is physically they see more reds than men oh I didn't know that oh I didn't know that either wow it's yeah. the, y, the X and the Y chromosome I'm not sciencey, but well, between I, I, I have a, a color deficiency a kind of color blindness mm -hmm. yeah. and so like I can see and appreciate colors but I have a hard time telling some of them apart like some blues and purples, some uh, you know the, your, your yeah. green red color blindness. Yeah. So like I, that's a red shirt. Right. Yeah. But if you, if somebody with the same value in a green stood next to you, I'd have a hard time. It would confuse them. Yeah. Yeah. So at least that's how I, I've it's been explained to me. Yeah. But I can see colors. I love color. Right. But Laura, you know, can just nail the combinations, the tones, the moods. Mm -hmm. There's moods and colors that I can't create with just my you know my tones this episode of iFanboy is brought to you by Squarespace go to squarespace.com to find out how you can make professional looking websites even if you don't know a thing about how to build them whether you're looking to build a blog a portfolio or any kind of website for your small business or giant business Squarespace has the tools you need even if you don't have all the coding experience go to squarespace.com and make sure to tell them iFanboy sent you so so now um, with Man Man with Rare Rocket 7 I mean the art is beautiful like we talked about the pop art and the colors and things like that um, but <laughs> the stories are also you're, I mean you're a great storyteller it's also a very you know and, and it's especially like with Man Man Issues, kind of do, doing these artistic experiments, storytelling experiments, but you're still working towards a general kind of story arc. How do you merge the, you know, the art and the story in the juxtaposition for the comic book medium? I mean, what is your approach in, in storytelling? Specifically for Mad Men, what it's become for me now is like um, playing with their lives. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what it is. They, I I know these characters so well now. I know what they're going to say to each other given the circumstance. And so for me, I just uh, dream up the circumstances. Yeah. So I, I put them in a situation, and then they react react to the situation. Yeah. And um, I would do the same thing whether I was writing it as a television script or a film script, right. because of those characters. So it's character driven, right. and then I'll uh, use the plots to then 
drive the characters. So like the two-page splash page issue where every, it was every two-page, the movement, you've got the story down already. Then you say, okay, but I'm going to make it move you know, horizontally in this yeah. way. Or the, or the artist, um, that great, amazing art um, where you did the tributes to the other artists and things right. like that. I mean, because it all works in the story. You know, cause, yeah, so yeah. in that case, with, yeah. with that, Frank's personality stays the same, even though he is... Uh, drawn differently in each panel right. so there's the character but his situation is being pulled through all these different incarnations these physical incarnations right. with the uh, single panel issue where the entire thing is one connected tracking shot yeah. um, again it's the situation they're dealing with these monsters but at the same time they have this conversation which flows naturally between them yeah. most specifically between Frank and um, Mr. Gum yeah. the stretchy guy yeah. and uh, so I know what they're going to say and and what what their goal is so it, it that's what is natural in the process process of it um, the it, the idea is w where I get excited yeah. and then um, it goes to thumbnail to to drawing to you know the ink inking and then Lord lays in the flats and then I go back and, and determine the the textures based on what what she did and each of those steps becomes more and more exciting towards the conclusion until we get to the end with the lettering which is by far the most tedious <laughs> and but then it's done and it's like this incredible high yeah. it, it really is so it, it, it's the idea wow then the execution through each stage and you get closer to the conclusion it, it becomes becomes more and more exciting and then it's done and then you get the feedback from your editors or your your marketing director or uh, the the production artist and then it hits the stands and then whoosh, you get you get this feedback and it's just a series of highs yeah. and then then there's kind of this little two-day vacation <laughs> and then but at the same time these ideas accumulate and because I draw my own stuff the ideas come faster than I'm able to execute them right. so yeah I've, I've never had to deal with uh, writer's block because as I'm r drawing any time I hit that block it works its way through by the time I'm done drawing what I'm working on cool. and then working with other writers is just as exciting for a whole other reason. Yeah, well, that, I want to touch on that. Is that you know, because you've been you've been known as an independent creator for as long. I mean, you were with the Legend Imprint back in the early '90s, and and through the '90s, you were self-publishing. Well, necessity, because no one would hire me. Right. <laughs> so I wasn't like I'm going to be an indie guy. It was like they I, nobody would let me be a you know mainstream guy. So, um, so I did my own stuff, and you know, fortunately, it took off. Yeah, and and so now you know you're doing your stuff at Image, which is great because they're one of the indie publishers. But you also you know you do work. For time to time for Marvel, for DC. Mm -hmm. how, how does the, the, your experience differ from working for one of the big publishers versus your own work? Or? Well, with Marvel and DC, with each of those, it, it, was, um, it was fanboy love. I don't know how else to put it. But having the opportunity to create X-Men with Peter Milligan, yeah. dream come true. Yeah. And have it marketed the way it was, you know, with all of the X-Books being relaunched at the same time. Yeah. And it was ours a big be, deal. It was a huge deal. It, it was amazing. And ours was the one with original characters. I mean, we made a bunch of characters and killed them off in the first issue and then had even more new <laughs> characters. So it was this huge rush of uh, creating dozens of yeah. new X-Men. You know, and, and, and then a couple of them ended up in that third X-Men movie, too. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. So as a fanboy, that's, that's that approach. You know, wow, I'm working on the X-Men. Or, or doing an issue of Sandman, you know, being a fan of Sandman. Or I've done uh, work with Bill Willingham and uh, on Fables. I want to ask you about that, because you draw Pinocchio as a little boy. And he looks like an adorable little boy. And he doesn't usually look that way. And it totally transformed the story for me because previously I was unable to sympathize with this kid that looked like a little old wise yeah. man, you know. Yeah. You've done him as this adorable, vulnerable boy. Well, that's, that's, I can explain easily on that. For, uh, for me, it's James Jean's covers. Mm -hmm. And James always draws Pinocchio as a little boy. Yeah. And so I... Whereas I, I really love what Bucky does, the regular artist. Um, Bucky wasn't going to be doing the cover for the issue I was doing. And I saw what James did with, did with Pinocchio. And so it was just easy to try to merge my style with how he did him on the cover. And so that was the thinking for that. But that issue, I'm really proud. I did a couple before. Uh, I, they, they'll ask me what characters I like the most. And I really love Snow White and his, her relationship with the big bad wolf, Big, big Bean. Um, and they're kids, they're cubs. Um, but with this one, uh, Bill made a map of Fable Town. And f through this story, we're able to w have them walk 
uh, Geppetto through Fable Town for the first time. And so they're walking him through the town and I was able to, to the challenge was to absolutely lock down each panel as if you're following them like you would in a film That's down a film. street. And so the, the, so it, this kind of goes back to your question with that. It, the challenge is what makes that exciting. So you work with the writer that, that approaches things differently. It stretches me, it challenges me, it excites me. And then uh, the, that kind of challenge where in the story you're actually having to make sure that you know exactly where they are at all times. And so they go down the street and back up the other street. And so with this one issue, you get this full tour of Fable Town. And don't forget about Netflix.com. You've got winter here, and you're going to need something to do during those cold months. With 90,000 titles, including Blu-ray, free shipping both days, and one-day turnaround time, Netflix.com is a place you should be. Go to www.netflix.com slash iFanboy to get a free two-week trial. And, of course, we got to tell you about GoDaddy. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to hosting connection. The place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com is what you need. .com names for as low as $199 plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much, much more. Get over to GoDaddy.com today and use the coupon code iFanboy to get 10% off of your purchase. And so, some of your, you know, Mad- Madman has got a bit of a reputation for being out there at times. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, very existential and things like that. That's so, me. Yeah, you know, what I was, was going to say is that how, do you ever, do, does, when you're working on Fables or if you're working on Marvel, do they, do, do they ask you to tone it down or do you, or do no. you adjust for the material? Or? I think I'd yeah. probably adjust for the material. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've, I, for me it's like a checklist um, of all these great characters and icons I've wanted to work with. So now I've worked with Superman and Batman and um, I did a solo issue with DC where I was able to, the other characters I hadn't had the chance to work with, I just threw them in there. So to kind of, in one way, get it out of my system. At no point did anybody ask me to alter anything. Although I did do uh, Superman Madman, which was a three issue series. blue, I have that, yeah. yeah. The, 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 <laughs> the first and only time Superman has crossed over with a, a creator owned character. Yeah. And there was this scene where um, Frank Einstein, Madman, and Superman, um, in my script, yeah. I, I wrote this yeah. one, um, and Mark, Mike Carlin was my contact with uh, uh, DC. And Mike Richardson at Dark Horse was the one who kind of helped put this together. But Frank and Superman are sitting down a, in a swing set in the script, and Frank asks Superman the question I would ask, do you believe in God? Yeah. Here's this being that's you know shot through the universe, does, and um, they wouldn't let me have Superman sit in the swing set. <laughs> really? Wait, they didn't have a problem with the question? No, they just had a problem with the swing set. <laughs> yeah, they, su- they had to have Superman <laughs> completely alert. <laughs> You know, making sure that everything was okay and could not, you know, we couldn't risk him lacking the dignity. Now you say it, I've never seen him slouch. Oh, never. Yeah. You'll never see him in a swing set. <laughs> or with a beer now. <laughs> but recently, yeah. You know, progression, things yeah. have changed. Yeah, not that much, but, actually. But uh, yeah. that's really interesting. Awesome. But with Superman Madman, I was to kind of, um, I'm obsessed with, you know, existentialism. And um, uh, my dad's a psychologist, so I partly blame him, but. <laughs> Um, I've al- always, from as long as I can remember, I've suffered from this, what my dad called existential angst. Okay. And it's this, uh, we're kind of in, the way I see it, we're trapped between the fear of existing forever, which, you know, it's a beautiful thing to think about life after death and heaven, but then, then what? And then what? You know, and in a million years, then what? And then in three trillion years, then what? And then what? To, to never cease existing, if you think it through, becomes terrifying. Yet, it's just as, if not more terrifying, to, to cease existing, or to have never have exist, or to existence, not to exist at all. And this is the kind of stuff that messes with my head. You just, you just blew my mind. You just totally... <laughs> well, there you go. And that's Frank Einstein. For me, yeah. that's my connection with Frank Einstein because here's this being who had a life, was brought back to life, given a cha- shown that his previous life w- was shady, mm-hmm. potentially. He still doesn't know exactly... He knows he did horrible things. He doesn't know if those horrible things were justified or not. But then he's faced with this new chance and with this relationship he has with Joe, his girlfriend, um, he wants to be good for her. And so it's, 
do we have the desire to make ourselves the best we can be or do we kind of just go with things and if if you want that you take it or do you justify earning it um, you know what is your process that that takes you through life and so all of these things go as Frank Einstein with this new life he sees everything and thinks everything through you know why am I doing this should I do this and most of the things he does are for the people around him because that's his family whether it's Dr. Flem who treats him like a lab rat or Joe who adores him for who knows why you know because he sees himself as this ugly thing monster type thing yeah and so that's how I see myself and I don't know why Laura loves me <laughs> I'm this thing and she's this beautiful you know being that that I don't deserve so um, all of that is how I'm able that's so Frank Einstein is definitely the, the character I identify most of any that I've created and where I'm able to filter all of this junk that's in my head yep. <laughs> and try to make make it work and make sense in a comic book cool so you mentioned that Man Man's uh, the current arc is wrapping up and then you're gonna go into some one and done so is, is there anything else on the horizon coming out that you got uh, scheduled or um, still trying to push the Mad Men uh, film forward. We have a script uh, that I worked on with uh, George Wang, who uh, wrote and directed Swimming with Sharks. Oh, cool. Terrific movie. Yeah. Uh, and he's a great friend of Robert Rodriguez. He, Robert got us together. And so I'm happy with that. So we're trying to work with scheduling. We're trying to figure out exactly what we want and how much it'll cost. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all kind of out of my hands. And so um, other than, because that's the only uh, thing that could take me off of my current goals, yeah. I'm able to focus uh, almost exclusively on Madman right now. Yeah. That's is, is that cool? Is that like I mean, that's, that's your you know doing a monthly well, book? It's and, the, the and game. Yeah, the the uh, there is my Golden Plates project too, though. Right, so right. that that became um, just uh, I bit off too much at first, yeah. and now I'm trying to figure out how I can um, complete it. Right. I, that's something I really want to complete. For me, that. Um, that book represents the closest thing to physical evidence that God exists. Um, if um, I, I tr try to approach it from like somebody who just steps in and is told, here's this book. It's a thousand year history, a thousand year record of these people that came from Jerusalem to the, uh, the, this continent right. and starting with 600 BC and then are told that uh, the, 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 God, the Son of God, will come. And so just like in Old Testament scripture, and then what you find, you know, he comes in New Testament, this, he comes as a resurrected being to the Americas. And then uh, 400 years later, this people get, they, they become corrupt and they get killed off. And then this, this record is found. And, and then God, with Jesus Christ as, at his side, give this, this farm boy from upper state New York, Joseph Smith, co very controversial figure. Yeah. And no matter what you think of Joseph Smith, the fact is he was a, he was a brilliant man. Yeah. Did he invent the Book of Mormon? If so, is the most brilliant fraud of all time because this church continues to grow as the fastest growing organized church in the world. Right. And um, so he either wrote this amazing piece of, of fiction yeah with this, again, thousand year history. This is a guy that didn't get beyond the fourth grade or he, or he truly did be, was this messenger from God to restore Christ's simple, true gospel. Right. So either, either way, it's interesting to me, whether you're fraud or truth, it's fascinating. And what I've come to understand is that, or hope for is that we're here to test ourselves. It isn't about being good or bad or, or, or better than other people. Um, so I, 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 don't, I, I don't get into these morality plays about, you know, um, are gay people evil or, uh, are, you know, it, or um, name, name a controversy. It doesn't m matter to me because we each have our challenges. We each, whether, um, and for me, it, it's how I've developed this live and let live philosophy where as long as somebody's happy and not hurting somebody else, it's the golden rule. Yeah. Just treat people with the same dignity that you want to be treated with. That's what I think we're here to learn and understand. Yeah. And um, if you just have the, if we can all just agree with that one simple philosophy, it doesn't matter if you go to church or don't go to church or what church you go to if you do go to a church. 
but that we're just kind to each other. Right. I just want people to think about who they are, why they're here, where, did they exist before this, are they going to exist after this, is there a reason for this? And then at least I did my part in trying to express things to other human beings. Just like the things that other artists and creators have expressed to me and have inspired me and helped me grow, I want to do that too. And I don't think comic books are the gutter that so many people think they are. It's, yeah. it's words and pictures. Right. They're so stories. I mean, that's, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yeah. Word, I love words. I love novels. Yeah. I love art. I love looking at, at, at architecture. I love looking at paintings on a wall. Yeah. And if you can combine images and words, I, that's why it's my favorite art form. Yeah. So in doing Red Rocket 7 to bring this all around, <laughs> um, that's what it, what it was for me to be able to explore all of these mediums that I loved. Yeah. And then in, in finishing it, I realized... As much as I love creating music, as love as I love filmmaking, yeah. I want to do comic books. Right. It's where I can completely and instantly express myself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, With no budget, no limitations. No, it's the yeah. poor man's film in industry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't need to buy a bunch of cameras. I don't need to you know, get editors and actors. actors and, yeah. yeah, it's just Producers. It's, it's all just on my little art table. Yeah. You know, yeah. If I've got a pencil and paper and Laura, <laughs> yeah. you know, but get some nice color in there. It's, it's everything I want it to be. Thank you. We've taken up a ton of your time. You've got a whole store full waiting to sign, but you're definitely one of the most unique and kind of uh, innovative creators that we were big fans of. So well, thank, you. thank you so much for all the great work and, and great job on Red Rocket 7. Thanks, so, thanks. thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Well, that certainly got heavy. <laughs> I love it. I love when artists and creators talk about what they feel about their work yeah. and talk about what they're excited about and why they do the things they do because we might have some really strange questions about that. Exactly. And Madman and Red Rocket 7 are definitely two unique, unique comics, I think. And, and All Red's a unique creator as well. So, um, cool. So if you like this episode and you want to talk to everybody to talk about Mike All Red's work, you can head over to ifanboy.com. There'll be a post where you can talk all about it. And if you have any questions, you can shoot us an email at contact.ifanboy.com or you can leave a voicemail on our voicemail line at 1-888-FANBOYS. It's 1-888-326-2697. And finally, check out all the rest of our videos at revision3.com forward slash ifanboy. They literally look like they came out of an issue of, of Mad Men. That's what I thought. <laughs> it's amazing, you know, see, we don't really think about the fashion implications when we do these I interviews. Constant yeah. clothing is like packaging, just like comic book covers, and it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing, apparently. <laughs> My black sneakers are not that bad. <laughs>